This vehicle is the Foch 155. This is a French Tier 10 tank destroyer in World of Tanks. I'm going to talk about equipment that you can use on this vehicle. Uh, with the current version 1.12, you have three equipment slots. I usually play a vehicle first before I decide how I equip it. I've played hundreds of games in this vehicle. Normally, anything that allows you to aim faster is a good idea. And in this case, you've got four choices. These four pieces of equipment will allow you to aim faster. We're making the assumption that you aim in all the way when you fire on average. A gun laying drive is used when you are motionless. If you move, the gun laying drive doesn't do anything. When you move, it restarts the aiming process. The rotational mechanism is used when you're moving. If you're stationary, it's useless. So if you're just sitting around waiting for a target, this is of no use to you. Uh, vents work in all cases to improve aiming. And the improved aiming works in all cases. Not only does it give you a little bit of a head start on the aiming circle, but the final circle is a little bit smaller, which is good for long-range sniping. My recommendation, because there's all sorts of different conditions, is to go with some combination. Just pick three of the four. Uh, and you see how it's got like the X over here? Make sure that your leftmost slot is one of the firepower uh, pieces of equipment so you get an additional bonus. We're going to look at this other equipment. I'm going to tell you what's good or bad about it. Spall liner, great idea if people fire HE at you. The problem is that wargaming on not every year, but they've more than once changed the way HE shells work. Or they've changed the way it's fired by a vehicle, such as artillery. There was a time when artillery primarily fired AP and APCR, and now they primarily fire HE, and I've heard they're going back to AP and APCR. So there's a lot of changes to HE shells, which means that small liner might work more sometimes, less sometimes. And I monitor to see how often someone fires HE at me, not that often. So my personal belief is that the small liner is not an optimal choice unless you're doing something that requires you to stay alive longer in the game. Then I would consider using it. Improved hardening gives you some extra hit points, which may or may not make a difference. It just changes when you decide to be more cautious. But it improves your suspension. Uh, I usually use this for light tanks or any vehicle that gets tracked often. If you feel you get tracked off and you might want this, when you use it with a light tank, harder to stop me because I use this on my light tanks. People try to track light tanks. I don't get tracked as often when I use this. For a turretless tank story, you could use it. Light tanks, every game you got to worry about getting tracked. But a turretless tank story, how often do you worry that someone's going to track you and make you vulnerable? And also, tracking can be fixed with small and large repair kits, I happen to bring two, which kind of nullifies this. Uh, this is for ammo rack, fuel tank, engine durability, um, and repair speed. The problem with this particular piece of equipment is that most of what this does can be improved using cruise skills. Your repair speed is cruise skills, a safe stowage on the ammo rack, and the one for the engine about leakage, I don't remember what it's called, or directives. Directives can also be used to compensate for this particular piece of equipment. Therefore, I really don't recommend this unless you're really worried about getting ammo rack. There might be some vehicles that do require this, but I don't think you need it for this vehicle. In terms of mobility, we've got additional browsers. This is good for um, 
turretless tank destroyers. It allows you to spin the vehicle faster, your traverse speed, for example. However, your traverse speed on this vehicle is already really good. So I don't think you necessarily need it. In addition, there are crew skills that improve your traverse speed, which include clutch braking and uh, is it called smooth ride or off-road driving. And you have, for example, uh, the combat course, which also improves uh, your traverse speed. So you can, again, compensate uh, traverse speed, which nullifies uh, the need for this particular piece of equipment, the additional grousers. There's people who say that turbocharger and additional grousers, under certain conditions, one might be better than another. Or, or they might be equivalent, but not in all conditions. There's going to be conditions where the turbocharger is better. There's going to be conditions where the grousers are just as good. But not every condition. 75% to engine power. The Fosh already has decent engine power. It has decent acceleration, so I really don't think it's necessary. The top speed is already pretty good. The reason why I don't recommend this is because you do spend a lot of your time sitting and waiting in a sniping position. One case where this is good is if you got to go around the corner, shoot at somebody, and get away as quickly as possible, this can come in handy. I use this on the Jagdpanzer E100 so I can get around the corner and get out of there faster. It does add to your reverse speed, 2 to 3 kilometers. If you look, it says mounted on Jagdpanzer E100. I don't recommend this for the Fosh. So we're going to look at spotting. Uh, you got the, the camo net, binox, a coated optics, muffler. Okay. Coated optics. I run this on almost every tank. However, if I go to my service record and I look up vehicles and I look up Fosh, Let's say we look up Fosh B. We're going to look up uh, enemy vehicle spotted 1.47. Damage caused with your assistance 575. Fosh 155. Damage caused with your assistance 568. Enemy vehicle spotted 1.42. The 568 is not a high number. It's relatively low. That means that if I put coded optics on these vehicles, I'm not seeing much of a benefit from it. And I have put coated optics on these vehicles because I usually try to get close to the enemy. Uh, in terms of Binox, if I had to choose between coated optics and Binox, I would definitely use the Binox. Uh, you're going to use it a lot more often, and you will get some spotting damage, and it is passive. An example, Serene Coast, if you're along the water, I often spot tanks that the heavy tanks can't see because the enemy heavy tank is around the hill and I get the spotting credit for it. Um, so again, I prefer Binox over coated optics. You use Binox often with uh, tank destroyers that are sitting in the back sniping. Now between, and remember, you cannot use both at the same time. You can put them both on the same vehicle, but if one is on, the other one's off. One is moving, one is stationary. With the camo net and the low noise exhaust system, I've tried these on various vehicles. You have to check over here. You see where it says your concealment? You got to be careful because if you put this low noise exhaust system and it only increases a small amount, for large vehicles, I believe you only get a small benefit from the low noise exhaust system. Uh, and therefore, it's really not worth it. You see how it says plus 5%? Unfortunately, you have to... Uh, you see it says it went up point, It went up plus 5. What you, you're, you know how to hide. So you're hiding in the bushes. Nobody spots you. It's when you're firing that matters, which is the 0.68. It's a relatively low number. If we try this... It's 1.41. I would say, no, I'm sorry, camouflage net 
I would say go with the camouflage net if you have to choose between the two because you're likely to be stationary when you're firing. You get a little bit of a bonus, but I'm going to be honest with you. I've used the camo net in the game. You really got to be far away from the enemy to have any sort of benefit or you already have to have a really high camo rating. Um, I haven't seen a huge difference um, in terms of... Uh, using the camo net in the game. Um, but it's I believe that I do for this, uh, because on light tanks you're driving around, I do believe, obviously it does work. It, it's all, this The good thing about the exhaust system, it's always on. So if you don't know how to play and you want to hide better, use the exhaust system. It will always work, except you cannot use both at the same time. You can mount them both, but... If the camo net turns on, the low noise exhaust benefit goes away. And if you're moving, you get the low noise exhaust benefit, but the camo benefit goes away. And also keep in mind that the vents might improve your muffler. So we'll check. You see over here it says low noise exhaust 0.68. We'll see if uh, vents makes a difference. Nope, no difference. In some cases, it will. <clears throat> we'll check with coded optics. View range says 97. And now it says 95. So the vents allowed the Binox to have an additional 2 um, to the view range from the Binox. So I've gone through all of the equipment. My advice, if you don't know what you're doing, try to pick something that's always on, not the ones that have to, where you have to be stationary to activate. Number two, play the tank first before you decide how you want to equip it. See the aiming time, 2.88? If it were under two, you really don't need to worry about aiming. And you see this dispersion is 0.35? The dispersion is pretty good. So this vehicle you do have to aim. My recommendation, you pick three of the four. Now keep in mind, vents, always improving your aiming. Improved aiming, always improving your aiming. Gun laying drive, aims faster if you're not moving. This one aims faster if you are moving. doesn't aim faster, but it gives you a better starting point. Uh, the... This does have other advantages because you'll turn your vehicle a little bit faster. And on a map like Himmelsdorf, you'll navigate uh, lots of turns faster. So what would I put? I guess I would put, because you're usually not moving, I would put vents, um, improved aiming, gun laying drive. And the rotational mechanism, close combat... You know what, if you are close combat like in the city, uh, it would be good. But, um, and remember, we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. We're going to check the gun laying drive. Right? Aim time. 0.26. What happens when I add vents? It's still 0.26. The vents do not improve the gun laying drive. It improves some options and others not. Uh, so this one obviously is not improved. Okay, so I hope um, I hope that gave you some insight for this vehicle. This vehicle is very, very similar to the Fosh B. My advice is that you do equip them the same. If you have any questions or comments, please post below.